Welcome everyone. Today's talk is on reading food labels. In today's agenda, we're going to be reading food labels and how to read them. The reason why we're reading food labels is to help each one of us to make more informed choices when it comes to grocery shopping or preparing food at home. The healthiest foods often don't need a label. So any sort of food that's in the perimeter of a supermarket, for example, fruits, vegetables, they will not have an ingredient or a nutrition fact list. Anything that is packaged, you will need to use the information that you acquire from this talk in order to make a more informed decision in what choice is healthiest. So this is what you're looking for when you pick up a packaged item. You'll notice there's a nutrition facts box, uh, which we'll be speaking about in more detail in the coming slides. But the ingredients list is also going to be featured there. So these are all the ingredients that are in the, in the item itself. And there is a specific purpose in the order of the ingredients here. So whichever ingredient is the very first thing you read on the, on the, on the box, that is the most prevalent in the item. So if you have healthier ingredients, it means this item is going to be healthier. But if you have more unhealthy ingredients, obviously this is not going to be as healthy. So a rule of thumb is if you notice an unhealthy ingredient within the first three ingredients, then this is an item that you want to be consuming less of. So for example, here we have whole wheat as number one ingredient, wheat bran as number two, and then as number three we have sugar slash glucose, which is just sugar. So this is a kind of item that you want to consume less of. And you want to aim for consuming ingredients that you can read and you can understand. Rule of thumb is the ingredients that are less accessible when it comes to pronouncing them, then again, you want to reduce this as often as you can. How to read food labels. We always start with the serving size. Then we proceed to the percentage daily value. And finally, we look at the nutrients. When it comes to the serving size, that's always located at the top of the nutrition facts box. So here we have crackers. So we have nine crackers for the serving size and we have the weight. And this could also be slices, cups, or pieces, for example, but you're always gonna have that. That should be your first uh, reaction when it, when it comes to managing your eating. How much is in a serving size? This is not a regulated number, and you also want to use the serving size as a way to compare between different brands. Now, following the service size, we have the percentage daily value. So this percentage daily value is consistent with the serving size. So for example, here we have nine crackers. If we consume 18 crackers, this percentage daily value will double. So it's very important for us to manage our serving size in order to determine our percentage daily value. Now, this is a regulated number, and it gives you a quick snapshot uh, in order to quickly identify your product properties. Now, this percentage daily value is the average value of each nutrition group that an average size person should be consuming. So if you fall outside this parameter, then obviously it becomes a bit more tricky when it comes to figuring out your percentage daily value. So this is why you have to use this as a guide more than anything. So as a rule of thumb, if it's less than 5%, daily value that is a little. If it's between 5 and 15%, that is somewhere in the middle. And if it's more than 15%, that is a lot. Now, when it comes to the nutrients, as we're looking uh, from the left side here, um, you'll notice that we have different nutrient groups. We have our fats, okay, uh, which are then further broken down into saturated and trans fat, but it can also be unsaturated fats. Uh, we have cholesterol as well. Uh, then we have sodium, which is salt. And then we have carbohydrates, which is then further broken down into fiber and sugars. You could even have others, such as sugar alcohols. And then we have protein. And that gives you a quick snapshot in regards to what you are consuming. In regards to the weight, 
in regards to the percentile value and whatever your your health goals are or whatever underlying condition you may have when it comes to your health, whether you have diabetes, you're living with heart failure, for example, this will help guide you in regards to uh, how, what you should be consuming. This slide we're just going to compare two boxed uh, cracker uh, items. So here, cracker A and cracker B, we'll notice that definitely there's a different weight based on the amount of crackers. So again, we don't know the size per cracker here. Um, the calories are, are the same. Fats uh, are definitely less in cracker B, and it's got less saturated fat as well. Uh, for sodium or salt, there's definitely less in cracker B. And when it comes to carbohydrates, uh, overall, uh, we have a bit more in the cracker B section, but we have a lot more fiber. Um, and when it comes to sugars, we have one gram there as well. Then we also have protein, which you'll notice also there is not a percentage daily value because that is based on actual weight of the individual. So again, depending on what your taste is like, uh, you're going to have to make a decision based on Cracker A or Cracker B. Now, um, we know which one is healthiest. You know, Cracker B has got less salt, less fat. It's got more fiber. Cracker A, it's got no sugars, it's got a bit more protein, but it has more salt and more fat. So you're going to have to make a decision based on reading the food labels. So in summary, uh, if you can just think back about one thing that you learned from this presentation. And again, start reading food labels, practice in the stores, uh, and this can be used to make informed choices. And look at the serving size, the nutrients, and the percentage daily value to do so. And again, most of the healthiest foods do not require a label. It is important to choose these more often. Okay, so for more information, do speak to your exercise therapist. Uh, we do have a registered dietitian, so you can definitely book an appointment with her. And please do attend our Healthy Heart Eating Talks and our Mindful Eating Talk, which are also uh, presented by our registered dietitian. Okay, thank you. It has been a pleasure.